Okay, we have a brand new minimal install of CentOS version 7. Let's start our installation for our SFTP server. Firstly, let's check if SSH is installed and what version we have. To do this, we type SSH-V. Note this must be an uppercase V. And then we see that we have OpenSSH 6.4 installed. Now let's make sure that uh, SSH starts up with the server. To do this we use our new system control option. And we type enable sshd.service. Now let's just double check that it is started. There you go. Alright, so now we have uh, basic SSH up and running with all the default settings. Let's make sure that our network interface will also start up with the server. To do this we type NMTUI for the network manager text user interface. Now we can go and edit a connection. We only have one so that's fine, we just choose that. We can leave the default name or if you really want to, you can change it to something we're more familiar with such as ETH0. We go down to automatically connect and we press our space bar to choose it. We just move down to OK, press enter, and we can now quit. Alright, so now we have our network available. Let's make sure that um, the firewall is open for port 22, which is our SSH. To do this, we type netstat tulpn and we're going to pipe the results of that to our grep, our search tool, and we're going to look for port 22. And here we see that uh, IP4 and IP6 both have port 22 open, so that's fantastic. Okay, so let's actually go and configure our SSH. To do this we're going to use V, and we're going to go look in etc, ssh, and sshd underscore config. Right, so this is our config file. We can now scroll down. Um, for a basic install, we don't have to worry too much about the stuff on the top. Okay, so where it says subsystem, we're going to press I, and now we can start editing. So let's comment that out. And let's create a new line, type subsystem again. And we're going to make it for SFTP. Sorry, let's actually tab this rather just to be a bit more neat. And we're going to go to internal SFTP. Okay, now let's create a rule that's going to match a group. To do this, let's go to the end. I'm going to say match group. And let's look at a group called SFTP only. Okay, and here's where we start doing our jail. So we're going to say chrot, chrot directory, and we're going to make this in the home. Now we're going to force the command for internal SFTP. Sorry, there must be a lowercase i. Okay, let's disable our X11 forwarding for these guys. We don't want them to have that. And our TCP forwarding. Okay, so now we've got our match rule set up. Let's press escape. And now let's save and quit. Right, now let's go and restart our SSH service. So we go back to our system control. And we go restart.
Okay, so now we have our system configured, but by default we only have the root user set up on it, which is not really going to help us. So let's go and add a user for John. He needs to go and add some files to our SFTP server. But before that, we need to create a group to add him in. And the group we did earlier is our SFTP only group. So let's go and add that group add. And we're going to just say SFTP only. Now let's go and add our user. So we're going to call him John. And we're going to add him to the group SFTP only. And let's not give him any shell access. So we're going to go uh, bin and put him in false. Now let's set a password for John. So we go up here SSWD. So let's put our new password in. Obviously the password I've used is not very good, but it's a test environment, so we don't really care. Fantastic, and we're done. Now let's go and make a, a home directory for John. Uh, because of the, the root or the jail, John is not going to be able to add files into the root of his home directory. So let's create a data directory for him. To do this, we do our make directory. And we're going to go home, John. Let's create something called data directory. This can be pretty much anything you want, really. I'm just going with data dar. Okay, so we change the ownership uh, to root of his home directory. And let's change the permissions on there as well. So we're going to go, let's say, 755 home and drop. Okay. Now let's change ownership of his data directory. So we're going to say chown, make it John, and we're going to go home. Probably work better if I put a slash in there, right? And let's change the permissions on that as well. Right, fantastic. So now we have a user set up, we have our SFTP configured. But what's left? Well, our SE Linux is probably going to interfere. So let's just set up a Boolean for this quickly. To do this, we type SET, SE, B O L, dash uppercase P for Papa, and then SSH underscore C H R O T R W Founders. And we're going to make that on. This is going to take a while. No, I wasn't kidding, it really does take a while. Okay, now that that's done, let's test it. So to do that, let's type SFTP, John, John, at localhost. Yes, we'll trust it, and let's type John's password in. And I've probably got the password law wrong. Let's try again. There we go. Now let's see what can John see. You can see his data directory. Let's uh, move to that. Is there anything in there? Nope, nothing in there. So let's make a directory, call it test, and we're successful. So now, yep, there it is. Let's log him off. And we have successfully created our SFTP server. We have rooted John, and everything is nice and secure and running smooth. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps you.